This is Professor Wick from RN2 Professors with a review video for you on fluid balance. In this video, I will review questions on fluid balance which is the input and output of fluids in the body that allow metabolic processes to function correctly. I will show you how to determine what the question is asking you and the rationale for the correct and incorrect answers. This is a part of our fluids, electrolytes, and ABG series. You can get these videos by clicking the link that shows up on the right top hand corner. Let's review. The client being admitted to the ED reports feeling weak and having almost passed out. The client was gardening in an outside temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Assessment findings reveal poor skin turgor, dry and dull mucous membranes, heart rate of 120 beats a minute, and blood pressure of 92 over 54. Which problem is the nurse's priority? Number one impaired mucous membranes. Number two, high risk for falls. Number three, decreased cardiac output. Or number four, fluid volume deficit. This is an analysis question in the diagnosis phase of the nursing process. This is also a priority question. To answer this question, you will have to give the correct priority diagnosis. You know this because the question states that the nurse already did the assessment and has the data needed to make the nursing diagnosis, which is the next step in the nursing process. Interpret the data given to determine the priority problem as we read through the answers again. Number one, impaired mucous membranes. Number two, high risk for falls. Number three, decreased cardiac output. Number four, fluid volume deficit. The correct answer is number four, fluid volume deficit. The client is showing evident signs of dehydration and hypovolemia, such as weakness, syncope, poor skin turgor, dry and dull mucous membranes, and hypotension. The other answers are incorrect for the following reasons. Number one, the nurse should care for the client's mucous membranes, but it's not a priority. Number two, falling is a concern, but the client is now talking. Number three, there are no symptoms of decreased cardiac output. The client's map is 67, suggesting adequate cardiac output for tissue perfusion. Most clients need a map of at least 60 millimeters of mercury. Normal range is considered 70 to 100. Here's our next question. The nurse is caring for a client admitted with dehydration. Which factors should the nurse explore as contributing to the client's dehydration? Select all that apply. Number one, diarrhea. Number two, hemorrhage. Number three, diabetic ketoacidosis. Number four, hypoventilation. Number five, decreased urination. This is an application question in the assessment phase of the nursing process. It is also a select all that applies question. This question is asking you to give conditions causing dehydration. You'll have to apply your knowledge of each of these conditions to choose which answers are correct. As you read through the answers, look at each one individually and decide if it fits the question. Number one, diarrhea. Number two, hemorrhage. Number three, diabetic ketoacidosis. Number four, hypoventilation. Number five, decreased urination. The correct answers are one, two, and three. 
all three of these conditions cause fluid volume deficit. Number four and five are incorrect because hyperventilation is a risk for dehydration, not hypoventilation, and decreased urine output is a symptom of dehydration, not a cause. Next question. The nurse is caring for a comatose client receiving IV fluids at the amount that equals the urine output. The client is losing weight. Which should be the nurse's reasoning for the client's weight loss? Number one, about 500 milliliters a day of fluid is lost through the GI tract. Number two, insensible fluid loss accounts for about 400 milliliters a day. Number three, 200 milliliters a day of fluid is lost through perspiration. Number four, total fluid loss other than urine can equal 1,000 milliliters a day. This is an application question in the assessment phase of the nursing process. The question is asking you to assess the fluid loss and why the patient is losing weight. To answer this, you need to recall how the body loses fluid through sensible, and insensible fluid loss, and use that knowledge to determine what is causing the weight loss. Let's read through the answers again using that information. Number one, about 500 milliliters a day of fluid is lost through the GI tract. Number two, insensible fluid loss accounts for about 400 milliliters a day. Number three, 200 milliliters a day of fluid is lost through perspiration. Number four, total fluid loss other than urine can equal 1,000 milliliters a day. Number four is the correct answer. Besides urine, body fluid is lost through perspiration, the GI tract, skin, and lungs. This can account for over 1,000 milliliters a day, which is equal to approximately one kilogram or 2.2 pounds. You can eliminate the other questions because the fluid excretion is incorrect. Number one and three are showing an excretion higher than reality, and number two is lower. Here's our next question. Fluid replacement is prescribed for a child hospitalized after an electrical burn. Which indicators should the nurse use to determine the adequacy of fluid resuscitation? Select all that apply. Number one, capillary refill time. Number two, sensorium. Number three, urine output. Number four, blood pressure. Number five, skin turgor. This is an analysis question in the evaluation phase of the nursing process. This question is asking you to pick out the correct evaluation data to determine rehydration. Which of the answers would you use to evaluate fluid resuscitation? Number one, capillary refill time. Number two, sensorium. Number three, urine output. Number four, blood pressure. Number five, skin turgor. The answers are one, two, three, and five. These are all used to evaluate perfusion. Number four is incorrect because the blood pressure can be normal tensive even in the state of hypovolemia. A child can lose up to 20% of their fluid before it has an impact on their blood pressure. Final question. The client with end-stage renal disease has 2 plus pitting edema and a total serum protein of 5.8 grams per deciliter. The client's height is 6 feet and their weight is 180 pounds. Which physiological process should the nurse consider as the cause of the edema? Number one, decreased capillary hydrostatic pressure. Number two, decreased plasma onconic pressure. Number three, increased capillary permeability. Number four, decreased serum electrolytes. This is an analysis question in the evaluation phase of the nursing process. This question is pretty straightforward about what it's asking. However, it is what you need to focus on within the question to get the correct answer. 
The key to this question is the patient's diagnosis of end-stage renal disease and knowing that these patients are on a protein restriction. The mention of the client's total serum protein hints at this. Then, as you read through the answers again, apply that information on how it would influence fluid shifting and could be the cause of edema. Number one, decrease capillary hydrostatic pressure. Number two, decrease plasma on conic pressure. Number three, increase capillary permeability. Number four, decrease serum electrolytes. The correct answer is number two. The total serum protein is 5.8, which is low. Normal serum protein is usually about six to eight. End-stage renal disease clients often have low plasma protein from malnutrition and protein restrictions. These reduce plasma onconic pressure and result in fluid remaining in the interstitial space because the pressure is not great enough to pull the fluid into the capillaries. The other answers can be eliminated because number one, increased not decreased capillary hydrostatic pressure can result in edema. Number three can also cause edema, but the low serum protein suggests decreased onconic pressure is the most likely cause of the edema. Number four, an increase, not a decreased level of serum electrolytes is present. That is all for this review. Thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, check out the others in the series and click like, subscribe, and the bell to get notified when new videos are posted.